Well, I just did. To the kid version of me, does this remind you of something from back in the day? Yeah, Stuart Little One. Good fucking times. When your butt hits the floor like Michael McDonald, you lose. And that's what works for the Booty Barker Chain Gang. The price is wrong, bitch. And that was the angriest I've ever seen Shoppa in a very, very, very long time. So I just got through, yeah, as you may have guessed by the intro of the video, I just got through watching the Bobby Labonte Jeremy Mayfield and Tony Stewart installments of Danger Force. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, but well worth the wait. Now we have a you no know, good us catching up on Side Hustle tomorrow. I gotta check the installment count. You know, we're gonna have three episodes left of each show starting not this Thursday because they're off, but the Thursday after that we get to knock this shit out. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna make this quick because the episodes didn't even take that very long. Unless I was rewinding it because I was going crazy and shit. But, okay, the Bobby, the Bobby Labonte installment. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible so I don't wake any of my family. But, so the Bobby Labonte installment. Um, that, um, Riken, wait. <laughs> Okay, I just wanted to make sure I, I got his name right. That Minyak guy was something else, but at the same time, for a villain, he's funny as fuck. I mean, I don't know how, you know, um, Vince, Mikey, and CJ, you know, those off-camera, behind-the-scenes people at Danger Force, you know, let Cap, you know, Captain Man and his crew, you know, stay in there, considering, you know, and this was the episode where it was his house temporarily until they got, you know, the, the mayor, you know, uh, Bozy's mom's husband to, like, sign that law to make it legal again, and the judge, Capri Ladd, it was great to see you again, overturned it so he could have it again, and of course, you know me, it's just not any Nickelodeon night, whether it's real time or recorded, or, you know, DVR Nickelodeon website. It's not just any Nickelodeon night where without a Mike Skinner of yeah, goddamn it, we'd beat that little son of a bitch. And that's what I gave. Um, um, oh my god, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Oh my god. Okay, Minyak. That's what I gave Minyak. I gave him a Mike Skinner of yeah, goddamn it, we beat that little son of a bitch because that fucker deserved it. But. Okay, well, I'm going to save the best one for last, though. The Tony Stewart installment. I'm starting with the Joe Gibbs installments because I'm saving my favorite episode of the season and the whole series for last. That was fucking awesome. But I have never seen Choppa that fucking pissed off. I mean, she was shouting at Ray, accusing him of stealing, you know, reeling the phone when it was Bozy all along in events before the Danger Force um, series, you know, was conceived back when it was Henry Danger. And they were showing flashbacks to an old episode that aired on my birthday, right before the pandemic, when Noah Gregson won the Napa 300 Bush race at Daytona to, for my 20, for the start that what was a wild 2020 NASCAR season on my birthday. That's one a day, and I didn't even know that. It's like the things you learn, the things you you learn something new every day. The things you, little things you, about your favorite things, the little the little known facts about your favorite things that you find out daily that you didn't know about at all to begin with this whole time. Wow, like I'm glad you know Bozy and Chapa talked it out and they hugged it out the end. And I still don't. At the same time, I don't blame Chapa for still wanting to be mad at Ray for like keeping it hostage the whole time without you know telling her about it. I mean, I wasn't here for the original Henry Danger series, so I can't voice my opinion on that series in particular because I just never cared for it. And because you know, I prefer the one that's on now, considering you know. It just started, you know, when I started getting into Nickelodeon, modern Nickelodeon, 
I was le leaving, you know, behind two franchises from, you know, the early days in this house, you know, Lab Rats 2015, 2017, and then before in Brook Park, February um, 20th, 2012 to February 2nd, 2013, I got canceled, Victorious, then went to Lab Rats. By the time I got to Modern Nickelodeon, there were so many shows already in progress that it was going to be too late for me to become a fan. I tried Thunder Men's Nicky, Ricky, and Dickie, and Dawn in 2018, as you remember, but it was too late because by the time I came in and they were ending their run and would have been too late for me for da Henry Danger so there was no point plus I never cared for it anyway even if it, it was in the middle of its run nowhere near an end so that's why I decided to say fuck it and start from scratch with Danger Force when it comes to this trilogy so yeah I mean and of course that Wasty I mean the robot whoever did whoever voiced the Wasty I don't really know the actor and I not really act that I care but you did a damn good job making him seem real and the fact that you know they somehow had Michael D. Cohen stuck in the can you know how did Mikey and CJ you know Corona and Nowak get Mike Michael you know gotta get Cohen stuck in there I mean they did a damn good job making them fit in there, because if I try to get in there, my fat ass would get fucking stuck and would never want to come out. But, well, there's really not much to talk about there or the Bobby Labonte installment. It was just, you know, Maniac getting Mike Skinner at the end, you know, trying to buy the band. They still had to get Mike Skinner at the end, even with, you know, Kid Lawyer, the one, you know, Benjamin Mackey, I think his last name is, talking like a redneck, you know, Capri Lad, you know, the judge. Yeah, you know. Even with their help, he still couldn't win. And of course, you know, Angry Choppa with her phone that she loved, like it's her pet or something. <laughs> okay, now here's the best part. Here's my favorite. Ep okay, the glare. Hold on. Hold the fuck up. Okay, let's sit down for this. Okay. <sighs> Damn it. Okay. All right. This was my favorite episode. And of course, it's 19, you know, Mayfield, which. Explain. This is another another reason that proves why I was angry that he wasn't in Chase for the Cup 2005 when I got the game at 10 years old when it first came out. The Jeremy Mayfield installment, the Booty Barker Chain Gang. I just had this feeling that you know when it said that Chapa wasn't about happy about the outcome, which turned one, it turned out to be about her phone the next episode, and two, the booty bar. I was predicting it in the comments with these kid actors who played this, cha you know, chain gang, chain crew, booty Barker, whatever the fuck it, you whatever the fuck you want to call it. I call it both, but I predicted it, even though most of the world already saw it and knew what happened. I said the booty barker action when the price is right must award. And guess what? I was fucking right. As much as I would love to see the good guys win every time, and sometimes it's always, sometimes every once in a while, it's nice to see the bad guys win, only if you actually support these bad guys because of who plays them. <laughs> but the leader of this booty barker chain gang... Christine, you know, like AK Debbie. Oh my God, what I would, what I would, what I would do to get tickled by that Chris, by that Debbie's actress. What I would do to get tickled by that actress, by Debbie's actress, if I met her in person, the way she tickled Captain Man. <laughs> Except if she were to tickle me, I just wouldn't want her to make me piss my pants. That's the only thing I, I ask her. Don't make if you do this in real life, Christine. Don't make me piss my pants. I just love being tickled, especially when it's a woman or a girl doing it. But <laughs> I've always been that way since I've gotten older. <laughs> since I was in high school, to be exact, when I lived in Brook Park in the Sandhurst house, I was a teenager going to Berea, and I'm I'm still like that today, and I'm never going to change until I take that shit to the goddamn grave. <laughs> wow. I mean, I thought, you know, Chapa would light, was going to light him up for, you know, hurting Bozy, but... I mean, Captain Man, I get it, was trying to protect the secret, but you said, fuck the... I, I, he should have said fuck them and Chapa should have told them fuck the secret. He was mean to my friend. He was mean to my friend. They Those his friends were mean to him. So fuck, fuck you. I'm going to use it anyway. Who cares? A goddamn secret gets exposed. But that's what I would have done. But then again, we would have had a different storyline, you know. But it was expected the good guys would win. You know, I... I kind of predicted it right and wrong. I said in an earlier video that when I was talking about this episode that I knew for sure 99.9% .9 of the time the good, their old Danger Force was going to win. But it that 1%, that little 1%, that um, 0.01% that the ba time the bad guys sometimes win. And this is one of those 
one attempts, you know. No, not. Yeah, that was. Let me try that again. Usually, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the good guys always win, but very rarely, zero point oh one percent of the time, the bad guys win every now and then. This was one of those zero point oh one um per uh, like. Um, percent of the this is this was one of those times where it, this was one of those occasions where it was 0 0.01 percent uh, of the time where the bad guys win this was this was one of them this was part of that 0 0.01 attempt <laughs> oh my god that's fucking hard to get out of my mouth but the bad guys actually won for a change i mean i mean it's nice to see the good guys always win don't get me wrong that never gets old but if it if it happens to become too repetitive then it wouldn't be as fun you know you know keep doing Mike Skinner's of yeah, goddamn it, we beat that little son of a bitch. But maybe the TV gods knew that you know I loved the actors who played this booty Barker chain gang. So I don't think they wanted me to say it to them because they were fucking bad at good. They were fucking some badasses. There was some damn good badasses too. And when Choppa and Cotton all in you know her uniform lit those kids up that Nickelodeon never showed it to us it's like why you should have showed it to us you know should have showed the, you know, the booty barker chain gang after claiming their title we defending a title getting their shit kicked in like Ricky Rudd and um hip-hop hooray you know after their victory but hey can't always get what you want but at the same time this is why we also can't have nice things but Okay, so therefore, I finally got the Danger Force stuff taken care of. Tomorrow, we spend time with my mom off camera. And after we're done doing that, then we're going to set up her update, set up her, you know, finish setting up her new Twitter account, like updating it, following like certain people, like three different categories. First, I'm going to have her follow family on her side that's on, on Twitter, then people I work with, and then just neighbors in Sandy Ridge that she knows. And then we're going to catch up on every side hustle episode we miss from here on out. I think, um, let me see in here. I know. I think it's Bobby Laban. Hold on. I'm gonna actually. I'm just gonna check right now. That way we don't have to count when we get to this point tomorrow night. Okay, I had the chance to check Side Hustle Wiki, and we left off on the Larry Foyt installment. So tomorrow, after my time with my mom off camera is done, we're gonna have um catch up on um the Michael Walter, Booty Biffle, and Matt Kenseth installments, and next week. No danger force and side hustles, so therefore we have to prepare. You now, a week from tonight, well, it's, even though it's already Saturday, technically here on the East Coast, it's 2.30 in the morning here in Northeast Ohio. So a week from, you know, next Friday, you know, well, the world premieres of Villains of Valley View and Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion on Disney Channel. The week after that, you know, we, fi we get to finally finish those suckers on Nickelodeon out. You know, Danger Force Side Hustle. I think we're going to have, um, let me get out the Elliot Sadler installment of Danger Force. And I think, I think it's the Bobby Labonte installment of, of Side Hustle. Not next, this coming Thursday, but the Thursday after that. The Thursday after that. And then the next day, the Friday night, will be the first Disney Channel triple header of the summer. You know, for the summer television season, you know. Because we, we're on then, we'll be finishing out our little um, television season of 2021-2022. June 10th, you know, the, in our, the world premiere of season 6 of Bunk. And then the, the, after that, the Rusty Wallace installments of Villains of Valley View and Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion. And then two more Danger Forces and Side Hustles the next two weeks after that will be done. And we can just not only fully focus on our summer t shows, Bunked, uh, Villains of Valley View, Ultraviolet Black Scorpion, but also around the, this around that time as we get head into the month of June, the TV mega mix of two NCIS episodes with Bria B, Daniel DiMaggio, Matt Sato, Terry Polo from... Um, Daniel DiMaggio, American Housewife, Priya B, obviously Goldberg, Matt Sato, Side Hustle, Terry Polo, The Big Leap, and then of course, since that show just ended its run just now, even though I'm not a big NBC television television fan except for Midnight Texas, when I did a one-off in 2018-19 to support Marisa Cuevas from Live in La Vida Labyrinth, um, we're going to do This Is Us, the episode that Olivia Sanabia was on as a girl named McKenna since 
Nobody was telling us anything when it when it first happened. We didn't find out till like after the fact it aired. So we're gonna include that in our mega mix. So therefore, I'm just gonna get off this fucking thing for the night and get ready for tomorrow's side hustle catch up marathon. So have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Life will give you a lot of lows, but when you hit a high, enjoy it. It ain't for the weak. Goddamn, be you. You have to try harder to do less. You can't deport a dream. Sometimes the worst things in life lead to the best things. Always bet on the side of love. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Sometimes you just gotta be present. So take care, everyone. Good night, and I will see you all tomorrow for the reaction videos to the Michael Waltrip Greg Booty Biffle, Matt Kenseth installments of Danger Force at the end of tomorrow night. And then, of course, Sunday, the Coca-Cola 600 live stream here on the channel. And of course, possibly Monday as a bonus, a, war a Memorial Day warm weather banger just for all of you. So see you later, everyone.